through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 223. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the week of January 22nd. Mm -hmm. January is almost over, sir. I know. I can't believe it. We're already almost a twelfth of the way through the year. Yeah, you're good with those you see monthly how I did math. Yeah. It's like there's 12 months and I knew that there I could make a fraction. Did you say like last that. time that we're like 122nd <laughs> yeah. or 104th uh, yeah. or whatever? Probably. Yeah, yeah. Something. you're good with that. Um, in terms of this week's releases, pretty solid week. Yeah. Definitely documentary heavy, mm -hmm. but they're a good documentary, yeah. so that, that's all good. Uh, the headliner this week, though, is of course one of my top 10 films of 2012. Really? And that is uh, End of Watch. Ooh, yes. I'm interested to see this. this is the, I missed it in the theater. I missed my yes, window. This is the Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, Michael Pena story about two cops in Los Angeles who sort of get um, in the way of a cartel. Yes. And it is They're problematic. They're rather than more like a... Yes. You know, Drug specialists, yes, and, and or, or SWAT, yeah, and I mean it's sort of it's it's very sort of tense in the manner of like uh, the Hurt Locker where mm, you're yes. constantly waiting for something to go wrong, yeah, and it's interesting because it's done in like a pseudo documentary fashion hmm. um, because Jake Gyllenhaal's character is taking a film class, so as part of that he's filming like their experiences on the job, so there is some like legitimacy hmm. to the very concept, yeah, um, very good film in terms of the release though. It's a pretty solid release. You got a commentary by the right director David Ayer, mm -hmm. who essentially, if you've seen a cop film in the last like decade, he's he's been he's in like it. he's the, like the writer usually. Oh. Like he wrote Training Day. Oh yes, like, he's that's done right. he's okay. done all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So he is the guy for like police movies <laughs> for tense police yes. movies recently. Yeah. So there's a commentary by him, which is great. Um, you got Fate with a Badge featurette, which Ooh. I think is sort of interesting. Probably discussing you know police work and all mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. Um, Women on the Watch, which is interesting because you've got people like America Ferrera. Ugly That's better right, herself as yes. one of these cops, and you know there there's some pretty badass chicks on this force. I mean, you know they they are they able well-rounded. They're able to hold their own, and you know um, they have to take some of the uh, abuse for being abuse. Ladies. Well, not just the abuse for being ladies, but, but abuse for being police officers. <laughs> yeah, they, there's uh, one who uh, endures some uh, hardship because of that, and it's uh, pretty intense. I see. Um, also. There's a, a digital copy on the Blu-ray edition, so if you want that digital copy, get the Blu-ray Blu copy. If you Sad don't, don't worry about it. Well, sadly, there's not the whole multi-format gamut that we like around the MacGuffin, so... Mm, no. Come on! Needless to say, it's a good film, uh, solid DVD release, mm -hmm. and, you know, I say, pick it up. I would recommend <coughs> it. Excuse me. You should be sorry. I am excuse uh, excused. <laughs> Next oh. up, we're going to start getting into our... Uh, Documentary portion documentary of this. Roll call. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> First up, an Academy Award nominated yes. documentary, one that there's an interview with on the McGuffin, McGuffin. website as mm -hmm. well, and mm -hmm. that is Searching for Sugarman. Yes. This is the story of Rodriguez, a musician from the 70s who mm -hmm. essentially disappeared from the world. Was believed to be dead. They, I mean, there are stories about him setting himself on fire mm -hmm. on stage, well, shooting things himself. Had a lot of urban legends. Yeah, about totally. His death. Tons of urban legends. And lo and behold, like, they are able to track him down. This documentary mm -hmm. filmmaker is able to track him down, you know. 40 years later, <laughs> and he's like a cult figure in South America. That's right, South, yeah. Sorry, South Africa. Yeah. Where some... he's more popular than, like, I think it's Elvis or the Beatles yes. or somebody. There's something like his uh, one single, or one his one record was, like, the most popular thing yeah, in South Africa. it was huge. For, like, substantial years. And so, you know, they catch up with this guy, and it's just a, a fascinating story of one man's journey. And he was a really interesting guy to talk to, really thoughtful guy. Wow, so you actually interviewed him? Yep, interviewed right. him and the director, Malik That's right. Was that at South by Southwest? No, it was at SIF. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's good For some time. reason, I thought that was. Don't worry about it. All over me. the place. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of this, uh, you got, let's see, a commentary with the director and Rodriguez, which, I mean, seems like exactly mm -hmm. what you'd want from mm -hmm. something like this. And if you don't get enough of those commentaries, head yep. on over to McGuffin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you have an evening with the director and Rodriguez, uh -huh. and you have a feature about the making of. Very I cool. I mean, you know, for documentaries, you just generally don't have a ton of special yeah. features, and these are pretty much the special features you'd want. About, yeah, exactly. Pretty uh, standard, but standard in a good way. If they could commentaries, throw Commentaries, a making yeah. of, you know. Maybe if they threw in like a musical CD, it'd be perfect, but you know, you can't oh, I thought you were going to say a music video. <laughs> I don't know if Rodriguez would. Actually, you know, I bet he would do it. I bet he would do That's it. That's actually a good point. He's for a this pretty, movie, 
movie of all things, a music video might actually be appropriate. Dude. Unlike music videos in every other well, DVD. He, that I I've mean, he's been on like about. 60 minutes and stuff yeah, since yeah. this film has come out, and obviously it's been nominated for an Academy Award. Mm -hmm. So, uh, not my favorite documentary of last year, but it's definitely up there. It's definitely a solid one. Next up, another fantastic documentary, yes. The Imposter. Mm -hmm. This is the true story of a French man who pretended to be the <laughs> abducted child of a family in Texas. Such a hilarious story to me. I'm sorry. It's it's tragically messed it's tragic, up, but, but still it's hilarious. absurd in that this actually was able to go on. And someone actually tried to do that and succeeded even yeah. once, even for a little bit. <laughs> one, of, one of the interesting things about it, I mean, this is. Uh, sort of, I guess part of the way they told the story is that mm. they tell it through reenactments and sort of conversation with the people. Like, so he actually gets on the camera and discusses it. Interesting. So you got you got the story being told, um, but the reenactments were a little bit. I don't really like reenactments you know, in documentaries. Mm. Like that was one of the things that I didn't really love about Man on Wire. Like okay. I thought Man on Wire was great, gotcha. but the doc the the reenactments felt unnecessary. Like mm. the story is so interesting. Just let my imagination put the pieces together. I don't need you to. Some people literally... don't have as good of imagination as you, Spencer. Maybe. I maybe. mean, uh, sad to say that you might be more imaginative than some people out there in the world. I feel sorry for you out there if that's the case. <laughs> but needless to say, it it just feels like you know. A little bit too much because hmm. the story is just so interesting. These people talking, you don't need that extra element. But you know, whatever. Very interesting movie. Very interesting um, individuals involved with it. Sadly, there are no special features Ooh. on this. But I'll tell you what. Hmm. If you go to the MacGuffin website, we got an interview with the director of this, Barton See, Lane, as well. We're all over this. Sheet. We are. We are. We are. We try and we're trying to be there for you. So mm -hmm. for releases like this, where mm -hmm. there are no special features, we try and fill that little gap. We're here. MacGuffin is here for you. Yep. That's very political of you. <laughs> Thank you. But, you know, very, very interesting film. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's necessarily worth buying uh, on Blu-ray or DVD or whatever. Maybe come down to Scarecrow rent it here. Yeah, I would, rec I would recommend. I'd definitely at least a rental. But if you're a diehard fan of it, maybe buy it. So yeah, Who knows? Something about yeah. it. Yeah. Finally, the last one, uh, Criterion pick. We love them. Gotta go They're with that. They're so good. Uh, of an interesting film in and of itself, a yes. documentary as well. And this is Peanut yes. from Vim Vendors. Mm -hmm. This is uh, a documentary about the life of Pina Bausch, yes. who was a dancer. And, you know, unfortunately, the original plan for the documentary was to have her involved with yes. it looking back on her life but she died before that could happen mm -hmm. so they went back and it ultimately became a story told from the dancers who worked with her yes. as well as showcasing the dance pieces she created yeah i believe vim vendors have shut it down and they kind of went to him and were well, like, they, she was friends with vim vendors so okay. it was, i think it was really tough on him when he died and you know how Again, do you make a documentary about someone yeah. when they're no longer around it's very tough but i mean you know as classic as Criterion always does. You have the audio commentary. You've got mm -hmm. a making of featurette. You got behind the scenes footage. You have an interview with vendors. Um, you, you know you have. Uh, You're loaded. You have cool box art. Yeah, you have uh, <laughs> pieces by vendors and choreographer. Um, reprinted pieces by vendors and uh, Pina Bausch. Wow. A booklet with a, a by novelist. Or sorry. Booklet featuring a piece by novelist and essayist Siri Hustved, hmm. and you know a few other pieces in there. So it's, wow. I mean, it's a very solid release, and you know, an interesting, interesting film. I, I'm not a huge dance fan, unlike say like Alan, but I think the way they composed the film, you know, they yes. shot it in 3D and all these other things was very interesting. So even if you're not a fan of dance, yes. the way they constructed it's very, the film very keeps beautiful it movie, very beautiful movie. I will say that for sure. And once again, MacGuffinPodcast.com got an interview with Vin Vendors on this. there. Look at this. Three of three. Yeah, three, three of four. Of, well, I'm saying three of three as far as documentaries. Come on, Jake Joan Hall. Were you <laughs> snubbing us? Like, come on. Come we could have been Pina, perfect. We could talk gangster squad. We could. I would have talked about uh, But we're being snubbed here. So mm -hmm. come on. Somebody out there, yeah. write to them. Let us know that Let we the need. The Gyllenhaals know that the MacGuffins. I did interview Stephen Gyllenhaal. Mm. No Jake, though. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, you should, maybe you should have contacted Steve. Maybe it's your fault. For maybe not it is. reaching th down the line, yeah. the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. What can we do? maybe you're right. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> thank you for watching. Join mm -hmm. us next week for our discussion, or sorry, this Friday, yes. the 25th, yes. uh, for a discussion of Jason Statham. Parker mm -hmm. is coming out. You know, it'll be a good one. Interesting. Interesting dude. It'll be fun to talk about how many of his movies suck. Oh, woohoo. <laughs>
<laughs> That's yeah. right. Interesting. I'm going there. Ooh. <laughs> and as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, yes. Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast. Phone number, 323-761-9842. We're on Blip.tv, iTunes, Miro, Roku. Check in and get glue. Get some badges. Get some awards. Get sticky. Whatever it is they do, you do there. Leave us reviews on iTunes. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll see you next time. Stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to bite the side. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't st